T.H. Farrell. It's so good to have you joining in. Tag a friend, jump in with us. We are jars of clay, amen, and we are in a little st uh, study series called The Fear of the Lord, Discover the Key to Intimately Knowing God. Thank you for joining us. Tag a few friends and jump in and let's get in. We are on page 104 of 199, and we left off with our present condition. Uh, the, the book goes here, it said, there's another time period in Israel's history that parallels the present condition of the church. Remember that Israel's events and lessons are types and shadows of things to come in the church. After 70 years of Babylonian captivity, a group of Jews returned to their beloved promised land. Judgment was passed, restoration had begun, and it was time to rebuild the walls of the temple. Do you understand with me that although, although, how many just, you don't have to raise your hand, just look at me and smile. Uh, how many's ever been in trouble with the Lord? We we, we all have, and but I'll, and although we get in trouble sometimes, Amen. And although He corrects us, I want Him to correct me. If He don't correct me, I don't belong to Him, right? Do you ever run across the road and just beat the snot out of your, kid, out of your neighbor's kids? You ever felt like it? <laughs> but you didn't do it, right? Why didn't you do that? Because it's not your kid. And the Lord's the same way. He don't whip. He don't whip the devil's children. Amen. A lot of people say, I hope they get what they deserve. I said, they're going to hell. I said, well, how worse can it be than that? You know, but, uh, but what you have to understand is, is the correction that comes from God. What do you need this? Oh, I didn't get it. Uh, the correction that comes from God is only proof that I belong to God. He said, ye that are without chastisement are illegitimate. I'm going to put it real nice. I ain't going to go what the King James said about it. But he said, you're, you don't belong to me. He said, I didn't adopt you and you're not my child. He said, so you without correction. So I'm glad for the correction of the Lord. How many glad for that this morning? Initially, this place of the rebuilding was met and infused with enthusiasm, dedication, and hard work. However, as the initial excitement wore thin, the people lost their motivation. And 16 years later, they had yet to finish the temple. Do you know, today you'll not be, you'll not be remembered by what you start. You'll be remembered by what you finished. That's what you'll be remembered by. And 16 years later, they should have done had the temple built. 16 years later, they should have done had a place of worship established because God's wrath had subsided and God had favored them and put them back to the place where they could rebuild the house of God. Do you know, that, do you know this? That, and I didn't realize this until the second time I went to Israel. They still don't have a temple in Israel. Do you know that? There's not a place of worship there. Not, 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 not for the Jews. Not for the Jews. And I asked, I asked when I was there this past time, I said, how is it that they, how is it that they figure they get forgiveness of sins? They said by doing good deeds, by taking up money for the poor, things like that. They don't have a place of worship right now. They've got a lot, can I just tell you right now, they've got a lot of material for the last and final temple that's going to be built over there. And they're waiting on that big, uh, big gold dome to fall so they can build. That's where they're going to build their last temple at, right there. Uh, but they had 16 years to get this thing done and, and to establish a place of worship, and they haven't done it yet. They, at this point, they hadn't done it yet. Can I, you know, uh, can I ask you how long, how long you've been here and not counting today? I mean, you've got something you're supposed to do. I don't know what it is. That's between you and the Lord. But you have a purpose for being here and a purpose in the house of God. And, and what is it that God is calling you to do? The only you can do. I can't do yours. You can't do mine. But we can do ours together. Amen. 16 years had went by and they should have established a place of worship. They should have established at this time. They should have already established back the animal sacrifice. Because without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sins. Amen. But 16 years later they'd yet to finish the temple. Their personal affairs had taken precedence over the restoration of God's house. Yes, sir. I sat, I sat here the other night uh, real late with a young preacher. Sat down and talked with him for a long time. He's got a great vision. He wants to do great things for God. I believe he already, I believe the Lord's going to call him into the ministry. And uh, I asked him, I said, uh, I said, how many are you running? He looked at me. I said, uh, I said Larry Frazier taught me one of the greatest me uh, lessons I ever, I ever learned. I said, Larry, I said, how many are you running one time? This was before he got hurt. 
He said, I'm running 500. I said, Larry, I said, listen to me. I said, your church holds 125 people slam, smack, packed out. You're not running 500. He said, I am too. I said, then where are you putting them? He said, I only caught 70 of them. And, and that's what I asked him. I said, how many are you running? He said, well, I don't run nobody. I said, do you understand that Jesus took 12 men, one he knew was the devil, and he spent three years with them, not because he liked to hang out with people. He did it to try to, 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 to try to impact their lives, to disciple them, to teach them how they should. And the problem that we have in the church is not that we're not, not, that we're not having new converts. The problem that we have in the church is not the fact that new people ain't coming. The problem we have in the church is, is nobody's discipling those people. Not but a very few. A very, very, very few. Yeah, well, yeah, in three years you ought to be mature enough to go into ministry. Is that right? I mean, that's kind of what it looked like to me. I, I would think, you know, in doing something, you know. And here's, here's where the church lets down. Church of God lets down. Not Baptist folk, because they know how to do this. We don't know how to do this. They disciple people. They have programs set up. They have programs set up to disciple people, to teach them, to give them, uh, to put the, the tools in their hands to be able to survive, to learn how to walk with Christ, to learn how to be a disciple, a uh, disciple maker. See, my, my, my goal is to teach you how to win souls and teach you how to disciple people. And until we learn to do that, we're, we're at capacity because I got all I can handle right now. And I need some folk that's going to step in and start caring, caring about people that's going to step up, start calling people, checking on people. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. Uh, our lesson goes, says what God considered important and holy had been moved to the back burner. To awaken the people, God raised up the prophet Haggai. He confronted the people with this question. Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in a paneled house and this temple to lie in ruins? He said, you're taking care of yourself really good, but what about the house of God? See, and this is me, okay? This is me as a district overseer. When I pull up to one of our churches and the grass ain't mowed, it makes me aggravated. If the, if the house ain't kemp, I'm upset. Why? I understand sometimes the mowing guy can't get there. I get it every once in a while. But if it's every week and it's knee high, man, there's trash out there in the front, ain't nobody coming to your church. We represent God, do we not? Do we not? I mean, we represent Him. And if we misrepresent Him, then we get in trouble. Is that correct? So what I'm trying to say to you is this right here. God said through the prophet Haggai, He said, look here, He said, y'all done took care of your house. So that's back in the days of paneling. We don't even like paneling no more, do we? And He said, you live in panel houses. But he said, but the temple still, he said, you still ain't finished the work at God's house. Hey, let me tell you this right here. You can say what you want to. Fellas, we are in trouble with the women folk around here because they have done raise over half of the money for the camp meeting and we ain't raised nothing. Touch three people say nothing. We ain't raised nothing. But you know what they do? They care about the move of God or they wouldn't be out here baking these cakes and stuff. My wife was baking cakes. I gained five pounds just smelling the cakes that she baked last night. It's the truth. And, and they're baking pies and cakes. They're doing yard sales. And, and we're willing to let them do it, ain't we? We'll just buy the cakes. Is that what we're going to do? We'll do our part. <laughs> All right. Through this prophet, God explained the reason for such dissatisfaction. He said, you look for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house, that is in ruins. While every one of you, uh, while every one of you runs to his own house, therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew, and earth withholds its fruit. The rain had been withheld from their harvest. Whenever our pursuit for our blessings instead of uh, for the Lord, He will remove or withhold, so that we will cry out for Him again. Do you know that God will create a deficit in your life so that you will seek after Him? Oh my God. Listen, that goes against everything that's being taught now in the churches where they turned down the lights and turned up the smoke machines. But it's the God's truth. God will create a deficit in your life and, and so you will turn back to Him and say, what's wrong? What's going on here? What just happened? What happened to my finances? What happened to everything going on in my life? 
And you know something? It, it, it's got to rain on the just and unju on the unjust. All things are working together for our good. Sometimes, David said it was good for me. He, he said it was good that I was afflicted. He said since I've been, he said before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, have I kept your word? So, uh, so, God, so God created a deficit on their part. And you know something? Here's for me. The scariest thing in the world for me is what David prayed against was he said, take not the Holy Spirit from me. I don't want to, I don't want to ever be a deficit of the Spirit of God moving in the house of God. I cry out to the Lord all the time, God, this place is open to you. You come in, do what you want to do. Move by your Spirit. Help us. We have a dilemma today and there's a deficit all across the board. The, the deficit is this. Hey, I'm not being mean, okay? I, and I can't help it. I am a little bit mean. But, uh, but my pastor... My pastor, or my pastor, my friend was a, a pastor of this church right down here, right down, right down the road. I ain't even going to call it because we're on. And, and I'm telling you right now, he was the sole winningest man I ever met in my life. And he and I were good friends. He died of Agent Orange. He was a great man. I loved that guy. I went over to his house and sat and talked with him, prayed with him. We were good friends. And I'm telling you right now, he would not have shut that church down to just this past week. He would not have. Can I tell you, he would not have. He just stood up and said, no, sir, no, ma'am, we're going to have church. And it's important that you come and gather in the house of God. How important is it for us to come together and assemble ourselves? Hey, listen, Facebook's wonderful if you're sick. Facebook's wonderful if you're traveling. But if you can be in the house of God, you need to be in the house of God. Amen. you got to be there. And God created a deficit for those people that they uh, were wondering what. There was a dilemma that began to happen in their life. It said, in our dilemma today, is our dilemma today so different? We too live in an era of restoration. For the Bible tells us that Jesus will, will not return until the restoration of all things, Acts 3 and 21. The scripture promises all that was lost will be restored before the kingdom, before his return. God restored Israel's natural temple, yet our temple is not a natural one, but the altar composed of our hearts. This holy temple we repair and restore uh, should re should repair and restore to its divine order for his glory once again. Here's what I ask some of the young people to do. You know what I asked them to do? I asked them, I said, give me 30 minutes. I said, give me 30 minutes. I said, I said we're fixing to kick our meetings back in and stuff. I said, I need somebody that's going to gather around the altar. I said, I don't care if you put something up on the board. Please be quiet. Shut the doors. Whatever you want to do, but go in and engage God. I said, we're going to be praying over here in these, in these offices together for the move of God, but somebody else over there needs to set the precedence. And somebody needs to invite the presence of the Lord in there. And, and that's, you know, you know what's missing between old Pentecost and new Pentecost? The prayer rooms is missing, baby. The prayer rooms is missing. Can I tell you funny, you won't tell nobody? And I won't mention no name except for my wife. Uh, all the women used to pray over here on this other side over here in that side room, that far right one on the right over, and it would be slam packed. And we had a fella, God bless his heart, and I love him to death, and he's a good fella and all. Uh, but he wanted to come to the deacons meeting, and he went to the deacon, and he wanted to pray for 30 minutes after we got done praying, and after we done got through meeting, he still wanted to pray. So I just, I mean, you know, what was I supposed to do? I sent him over to pray with, and, and he got right in the door of the ladies' prayer room. And they all got done praying and sat there for 20 minutes while he kept on praying. And boy, do you talk about a sermon? I got one and I got home. I seen him anyway. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but you know what's really missing is prayer and consecration and dedication before God. Separation from the world. Amen. I'm afraid the church of God now allows things that the Baptist didn't used to allow. Boy, it got quiet all at once, didn't it? Man. It said, uh, let me get back to the lesson. It says, uh, this holy temple will be repaired and restored to its divine order for his glory once again. Yet in our season of restoration, we've behaved as Israel did. We have pursued the blessings and sought after the comfort and ease. For most of us, our best has been given to build our own paneled houses. Hey, that goes back. Can I just give you this? Hey, and listen, you know this. Shelly ain't in here right now, but she'd tell you if she was in here. I never go in there and see who pays tithes. The only guy I know for sure who does pay tithes is standing right here. I pay my tithes. But do you understand that what God was saying was, is it, he said, it's a, it's a monetary thing, okay? It's a monetary thing. Hey, thank God for what the Lord's blessed us all with. Amen. But you've got to understand to be blessed, it, it's an oxymoron, really, it don't make any sense. To get it, you've got to give it away. 
Hey, hey, and this is just me, and I'm just telling you for me. I, I ain't telling you to do this, but for me, for, for, for the last 17 years, I give a third instead of a tenth. And the Lord sure has helped me. And I don't know where it comes from, but He just keeps blessing. And can I tell you this? You'll never outgive God. And God said, You took care of your business and left mine to do what it's doing, just be in ruins. 16, can you imagine 16 years? It took us eight years, seven and a half, eight years to build that building over there. But we got it built. My greatest fear was I would die before we got it built. When we went in, I said, I'm ready. Take me now, Jesus. Brother Sheriff, you need to take up an offering. Sheriff's going to get ready and take up the offering. Go ahead. Amen. Said so we have given the majority of our time to achieve personal success so that we can enjoy comfort and security. Can I, and you know, I, here, this has not been too long ago. I had a family, and I really like these people, and they're good people. And I talk to them about once a month, still yet. And they, they were really mad at their pastor. I know you've never been mad at me, but they got really mad at their pastor. And they were going to quit, and they were going to come over here. And, uh, and I met them and sat down with them over there. And I just said, hey, guys, I said, I love y'all. I said, and you know you're welcome to come here. I said, but I don't think you're supposed to be here. They said, what do you mean? I said, you ain't supposed to be here. I said, you can't just leave the church because it's in trouble and you don't like the pastor. And I said, if you do, and they shut the doors, the light in the community goes out, and you need to stay where you're at and build the kingdom of God over there and leave a legacy in that community that somebody loved the house of God enough to stay and pay for the building. I said, y'all owe a ton of money over there. He said, that's right. I said, well, you can't leave. I said, I said if you was coming, God would have showed me you was coming. I said, I, I, said, I love y'all. I like to hang out with you, but you can't come. I said, go back. And they went back. God sent them a good pastor, and they're so glad they went back now. And they're good people. They didn't make good members here, but they'd have been miserable here because they're supposed to be over there. And, and, and here's what God said. God said, take care of my house. You know something in the south, it ain't like this up out west up, uh, and up north is bad, but in the south, there's a dad blame church on every street corner. Ain't it? I mean, it is. And, and a lot of it is because, a lot of it is, is because of church splits and splinters and all kinds of stuff that's went on. People just didn't want to be subject to this one or didn't want to do this or do that. And they decided to just start their own church. And they'll pull 15 or 20 people and go start another church. And I think the churches ought to come back together Amen. and do something for the kingdom of God instead of trying to. People that splinter like that are building their own kingdom. Amen? They, they're building their own kingdom. That's what they're doing. They're not building the kingdom of God or furthering the kingdom of God. Hey, you know what? We're part of a denomination. I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's one of the best ones out there. I wouldn't be a part of it. We got our, flaw, we got our flaws and problems like any other denomination would have. But this one thing that we got that a lot of people don't have, we really do teach the whole word of God. We believe it all. Right, and if you want the if you want to build the house of God, it's more than sticks and mortar and, and two befores and mud and, and electrical wiring. It's building the people of God that come in. You are the you are the house of God that He dwells in. What? No, you're not. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, whose temple you are. He lives on the inside of you. Right? I told this one sister one time. Please forgive me. I well, I ain't gonna say it. it I I'm on. I better, I'm watching that thing. I better not say. It. Where is my honor? Let's go right here. <laughs> Later God questioned Israel again through the last Old Testament prophet Malachi. He lived within a century of Haggai during the same restoration period. He cried out, and this is the New Living Translation. I don't really care for it, but it said, A son honors his father and a servant respects his master. I am your father and master, but where are the honor and respect I deserve? You have despised my name, but you asked, how have we ever despised your name? You despised my name by offering defiled sacrifices on my altar. Then you asked, how have we defiled the sacrifices? You defiled them by saying, the altar of the Lord deserves no respect. When you give blind animals as sacrifices, isn't that wrong? And isn't it wrong to offer animals that are crippled and diseased? Try giving gifts like that to your governor and see how... Pleased he is, saith the Lord. Malachi 1, 6 through 8. You know what he was saying? He was saying this right here. He was saying, you treat other people better than you treat me. How, on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you treat God in a daily? I'm asking for a 
friend. And I'd like to know if, uh, how, do you, how do you treat him? Is he first in your life? Hey, uh, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not here after your money, but that's a huge milestone for a lot of young Christians. Once you get across that milestone and you realize and you understand and you know that it's the right thing to do and you head in that direction, all these other things, when you put him first in that, all these other things are real easy to, to kind of get in line with, right? If you just got saved and you just got in, I ain't fussing at you. I'm just telling you, it's always keep him first. Old Bill Carter, a friend of mine, he's a mean, meaner than 40 devils. And I hated him and he hated me before I got saved. He worked on the back end of a machine and my lot in life was to kill him every day. I was going to kill him. I meant to. Hey, look here. That thing, I'd turn that thing up as fast as I knew it could get by with. I'd run it side to side, back to back. He turned the light on. I put 25 more on. I... Boom, 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 boom. Hitting the floor. Cussing me and me cussing him. I got saved. Went in there one day and carried my Bible in there. He still cussed me, but I couldn't cuss him back no more. He turned the light on. I stopped. I fed it at a reasonable pace and, and uh, tried to and finally, finally, Bill got saved. Bill said something to me one time. I never will forget what he said. Bill said, you know, he said, he said, you know what? He said, you know what, good spirit? He went Pentecost, but he sure knowed the Lord. He said, you know what good spirit you felt when you prayed? I said, yeah. He said, you know what good spirit you feel when you go pray? He said, if I don't feel that, I get worried about it. We ought to be worried about it sometimes if, if we don't touch the Lord when we go pray. Hey, the old timers over here on this side, they taught me to pray through. I just told some of, hey, in that class straight across right there is some of the uh, the grand, uh, the kids of the of the greatest saints of God I ever knew in my life. It was over here, and I and I come in here straight out of the bars and wasn't afraid. No man walked on two legs. Didn't care who you was. You know, I had people tell me what they was gonna do in that life. I said you gotta do it next week too, cause I'm gonna come back next week, cause I ain't afraid of you. And I walked in here. And Thelma Bradley and Marcel Marcel Gibbons, little women about that big, they scared me to death. I scared them women. Because, see, they, I was afraid it was going to call fire down in heaven and kill me because I didn't know anything about serving God. And them little women taught me how to serve God, precept by precept by precept. They taught me how to do it. Amen. And they, they called me and they checked on me and they spent time with me. And they come over to my house and invited me over to their house. And they spent time with me and they taught me how. And they, and they taught me to create a place of habitation for the Lord. Hey, listen, if you're a husband... You got to create a habitation place for your family. If you're a wife, you got to create a place in the home. It's habitation, right? Don't meet him at the door with a light bill. It's the wrong thing to do. I promise you, it's not good. But you got to create that place of habitation for as a husband or as a wife, and as a Christian, you got to create that place of habitation and invite him. He's already in there. Yes, according to the power that works in us, he's already in us. But the old timers, Marcella, Thelma, Zelma, Martha Welch, Martha Welch. You know, Martha Welch never did get married. Anybody remember her? Does anybody here remember Martha? A handful of people. Martha Welch laying over there and they thought she's dying. And I'd go see her all the time. And I, I went in over there one day and I said, Martha, Martha, wake up. And she woke up. She's about 80 some, almost 90 when she died. She never did marry. Kept herself all of her life. Just served the Lord with her body, with her sacrifice she's willing to make. And I went in over and I said, Martha, I said, wake up. I said, I've got a proposition for you. She said, what is it? I said, I know I'm ugly, but I said, let's me and you marry up. I said, I'm, I said, I'll get a job and we'll raise a family. That made her so mad. I'm telling you, I thought that old woman, hey, it stirred her up. Oh, she woke up, married. You know, she lived, she lived two, or three, lived two or three more weeks after that. She jumped up out of that bed. She pointed her finger at me. She said, if I was ever going to get married, I'd married before I knowed who you was. That's the people that raised me. And they taught me how to create a place of habitation for the Lord. To invite Him. That He's welcome to ride in the car with me. He's welcome. I got a, I got a little room now that I've got. It's a place I've dedicated to the Lord at the house. My grandbaby, when it comes to the house, she don't want to sleep nowhere but in there. You know why she wants to go in there? There's peace in there. That's where she wants to be at. She wants to go in there and watch Cocoa Melon. I think Cocoa Melon's of the devil. I hate it. It's like Barney was back when you were raising your kids. Remember that? I love you. No. Cocoa Melon's worse. Amen. It's set on fire of hell. But she wants to watch Cocoa Melon. And that's where she wants to be at. When she wants to go to sleep, that's where she wants to be at, in that room. Why? Because in that place is where I meet with God. You know what I do? I get up in the middle of the night and go in that room sometimes, just meet with Him. 
He's in there waiting on me. So I said, I thought he's in you. He is, but he's in there too. My God, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's everywhere, right? He ain't Santa Claus. He's better than that. And you know something? That's where I think we let down is we're not building a place of habitation for God right here. That's where we let down. The Old Testament was the temple. And they had to go to the temple. That's where the presence of the Lord was, was in the holy, in the holy place. Yes and amen. I got you. But this is the holy place now. This is where the Spirit of the Lord abides at. Yeah. Right. Right. So God asked his people, you call me Lord, but where's my honor and my reverence? How was, how was he not respected? He was given second best while the people retained the best for themselves. God, God called the people's action disrespectful and reverent in order to help the Israelites see their error more clearly. God challenged them to offer what you have given me to your governor. Or your boss, delegated leadership, far above, far below the level of of a king of the universe. If we worked for our employers the way many people serve God, we would be fired before the week was out. Hey, watch this. I'm telling you right now, it's amazing what twelve, fifteen dollars an hour will motivate you doing on Monday morning when you don't feel good. It's amazing, but it's. But you don't have, a lot of people, you do, but a lot of people don't have that same motivation when it comes to coming to the house of God. They're not motivated. There's too many other things that's more important. And God keeps a record, and we can justify it. You know, we do it, we do. Well, you know, the Lord understands. Yes, He understands. He understands more than you think He does. He understands. And can I just tell you this? I come, I come when I'm broke. I come when I'm upset. I come when my feelings is hurt. I come when I feel good. I come when I don't. I just come. I just keep coming. Why do you do that for, preacher? Because I made a commitment to God. I want to be here. I want to be found in his house. Hey, I, 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 listen, back in the days when I was over here, I'd crawl in these altars every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday, every time, trying to get it straight in the road. I came when I'd messed it up so bad, you wouldn't believe how bad I messed it up. Right? But I'd crawl in these altars, and finally, finally, got some victory and finally got a place a toehold against the devil and learn how to take control of the flesh that's the problem we have we say that he lives in us but we can't control the flesh and can I just tell you it's an oxymoron he has to be able to control the flesh if he lives in us how'd you like to ride down the road in a vehicle and the steering box go out anybody want to go I mean you run a hundred mile an hour and the steering box comes out my, da my daddy knows these old boys ride around in an old Volkswagen and they had a hot rod steering wheel over there you know daddy said they was bad to ride around and drink He's riding down the road, and he'd drive down the road, and said, I want to jerk the steering wheel off, hand that over. He said, you drive one. He go, hand it back to him. They said, he's going down the road, just flying one. They said, oh, boy, jerk the steering wheel off. I said, you drive. So said, oh, boy, cuss right big, so I won't drive. Throw it out the windshield, out the window. He said, you talking about sliding the Volkswagen around in the middle of the road? He said, we stopped and went back hunting for a, a steering wheel. And that's the same thing we do when we're serving the Lord and saying, he can't have no control. We're taking the Lord places he don't want to go. Watching things he don't want to watch, saying things he don't want to say. Well, that and, 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 and there's, there's no respect taught at home either. I mean, they, they talk to their parents any way they want to. And then they feel like they can do the, it's the same here. Y'all weren't in here. Thank God you wasn't. You might have left my church. You know what I mean? You might not come here. But I went down them steps right there after a little old boy, son. He's cussing me, calling me everything but a preacher. You know what I mean? He didn't hit this, where'd Becky go? He didn't hit Becky in the face, black her eye. And I grabbed him, one hand, one foot. He's throwing stuff at me. I was dodging stuff coming down the steps. I meant to get him. I reverted back. I reached all the way back to Adam. And I reminded myself when I got to the bottom steps, he's only 11 years old. And I got a foot and an arm, and I carried him, 110 pounds like that right there, and I carried him up them steps. 
he's screaming, I'm the GD boss around here. And I, I laid him right there and I sat down on top of him. Come on up here if you want me to sit on you. I bet you can't get up neither. And he swung straight up and tried to hit me. And when he did, I grabbed his arm. He said, I'm the boss. I said, get up, boss man, if you bad. I said, come on, get up with yourself. I said, I said if you want to be the boss, you're going to have to overtake me because I'm the boss around here. I said, you ain't going to throw stuff at people. I said, I don't care what you, I don't care, I don't care what your mama lets you do. You ain't going to act like that when you come here. Hey, the police came and I turned him loose. And he wasn't so bad after the police came. Right? Now he's, he's doing a lot better. The kid's doing so much better now. Thank God he's doing better. I mean, we're in the restoration, right? But at the moment, I was pretty upset about it. <laughs> Man, I was pretty hostile after me. I really did. I got mad. You ever get mad? I got mad. But I controlled my anger till the police came, and then he got straightened out, and he, he still comes sometimes, and he don't act like that anymore. But, but I've said that to say this. The fact of the matter being is, is a lot of times they're not taught respect at home. You got to teach them. You can't beat it into them. You got to do it by example. You got to do it. I mean, you got to teach them. Sometimes you got to beat it into them, right? My daddy, I'm telling you right, he didn't have enough sense to whoop a young one, but I'll tell you one thing. When he got done with you, you know you'd been whooped because you was laying over here and he's laying over there. He swinged, he fell down, you did too. That's what you got. That's the way daddy was, right? But I'll tell you one thing, he called my name and I done what he said. And it's about respect. And then you get it into high schools, you get it into schools, little kids, little bitty kids in school, cussing teachers. My daddy would have knocked every tooth in my mouth out. And he wasn't even a Christian, Right? You didn't do that. Hey, I, I, can I tell you this right? My daddy, my daddy was as prejudiced as you could be till he got saved. That's the truth. He was with he he uh, he was in the clan. I've told you that before. My daddy was in the clan. And, but you know something? If I was going into a place of business and an elderly black person was a, 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 if I cut them off, he'd have beat my brains out for disrespecting somebody uh, my elder. That's what my daddy was. He taught you respect. You might not have liked him. But honey, you respected him because you know he'd kill you, right? He'd kill you, and, and you know what? And the thing of it is, is we went through this thing through the '80s and '90s. Big signs everywhere, no fear, no fear. And now look what's happened. There's no fear of nothing anymore. And that's why little kids run around cussing out teachers and throwing stuff at Sunday school teachers. And that's why. And that's exactly why we're in the place we're in. Hey, listen, if you want to run for office, you got to hate white people. You got to kill a lot of babies, tell a lot of lies. That's how way you can get in, right? I hate your country. That's the way it is now. But back when I, hey, we got to, hey, look here, we was taught respect from the first time I walked in school. We, we, we walked in, they taught us the Pledge of Allegiance to the, to the flag. We had prayer back in them days. Can you believe that? We used to pray in school. We used to pray in school. And they kicked God out. Now look what happened. They kicked God out and brought the guns in. Hey, did you see in Knoxville where they, the police department said they're going to move out of all the schools down there? I would too. They need to. Because when you got kids carrying guns and they shoot first and then you have to do what you have to do, then you're going to get charged. No, sir, I wouldn't just let them. I mean, call the ambulance and we'll come and, and pick up the dead survivors. But I mean, they won't let nobody control them. Nobody's allowed to. And that's, why, and that's, the, way, that's the way this world is set up now. It ain't so in other countries, I'll tell you that. Hey, I was amazed at the respect that the young people was taught when I was in Israel. They teach, people, they teach their babies to respect elders and respect authority that's why when they pull them over when the cops pull them over listen when the cops pull you over if you want to, if you want to go see jesus real quick just go ahead reach over and pull out your gun boom you're out of here it's over with suicide by police that's what it's going to be be respectful even if you're even if you're right and they're wrong even if you're right right i'd fight it out in court for them i'm gonna get shot and i don't want to be tased i can't i don't think i could stand that I tell you one thing, if ever tase me, I won't get up to five of them comes to pick me up. I ain't getting up. If they tase me, I'd be their punishment. They have to carry me and put me in the police car. But I ain't fighting with them, are you? And what I'm trying to say is God said there ain't no reverence for me. And the reason in, in, in the society we live in, there's no reverence for God, but there's no reverence for nothing. For nothing. You think people are respectful? Go to Walmart about 12 o'clock one night and walk around in there. Dude looks like a lady. It's crazy anymore, right? All right, let's jump. Malachi and Haggai were true prophets. Their strong prophetic words brought about change in the hearts of Israel. Israel heard these words and obeyed the voice of the, the Lord their God and words of Haggai their prophet. And the Lord their God 
had sent them and the people feared the, the presence of the Lord. See, here's the thing, and I want you to understand is this right here. I know that I've got, I've got to meet with him. We're going to meet with him over here in just a little bit. It ain't going to be too long. We get over there. We get over there. We're, going to have, we're having a meeting today. You know, guess who's showing up? Guess, guess who's the guest of honor today? The Lord. He's coming. He's coming. No, he's coming today. Did you know that? He's coming today. And, and listen, watch this. And, and he's the only one supposed to be on the floor when I'm preaching. And he's walking in and out the aisles. And he's talking. And I found out a long time ago, I don't have to mention it. He's already talking to you about it anyway. And, and if all I got to do is get him to come. If he shows up, he takes care of to preach it anyway. It don't matter if he shows up. And you know what? And here's the problem that we have. As he's walking in and out, and we don't even recognize that he's there sometimes. We don't even know it. A lot of churches he's not invited to, Right? But he is invited here. But when he is invited here, I'm afraid that we don't even recognize him when he comes in the door. We hey, the disciples, the disciples, the disciples didn't recognize him after the resurrection. They didn't ask one another. They just kind of thought that was him, you know, because he walked through the wall there and all that kind of stuff. I figured that'd be him too, wouldn't you? And uh, I mean, and uh, but the, they didn't even ask one another. They said that's got to be him. He's uh, he walked through the wall. It's him. I know it's him. Uh, but they didn't recognize him, and a lot of times we don't recognize him either when he comes in. Sometimes I'm preaching up here, and I feel such an overwhelming presence of God, and I look back and people just clipping their toenails. I'm going, Jesus, they don't know you're here. It's like I told Brother Larry White, and I love him dearly, man, and I want y'all to continue to help me pray for him. You know, he, he was a self-proclaimed atheist, but he said, I'm going to come because my wife and my son are Christians, and he said, we like it, come down there. I said, well, you just come on down there. I said, we want to aggravate you. I said, but I promise you one thing. I said, you keep coming. Jesus introduced himself to you real proper like. And he did. And he did. He shows up. He's the guest of honor coming up here in a little while. He's going to show up. Hey, let me tell you this. When he shows up, people get saved. When he shows up, people get healed. When he shows up, marriages get healed. When he shows up, amen, demons have to turn people loose. You know what? I'm getting excited because I know one's coming up for too long. I guarantee you. I want to see the look on some of y'all's faces when one of them growls. We was in here, here, it's been about four years ago, I had one roar at me. Who was here? Anybody remember that? That dude roared at me. Hey, I, listen, yeah, the Lord saved me out of the hood. I can't help it. I got some hood uh, 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 attributes still. That dude roared at me, son. I choked him down. I didn't mean to. He roared. I yoked him up, got him in the headlock, pulled back on his head like that, and his neck popped. I said, come out in the name of Jesus. I ain't real sure the devil come out, but I think it scared him so bad he wasn't going to roar at me no more. <laughs> but y'all have seen some people. Hey, there was some folks, son, that went home to check the coffee pot uh, when that dude roared in there. About five years ago, maybe, maybe a little longer. I don't know. But we, get, we overdo one. We overdo one. I think the Lord lets us come every once in a while just so some people. I know we'll forget we was casting the devil out over here one night. It was over here on this side. These people haven't prayed in years. It was over on that altar before we got to that building. And they was over there pleading the blood. So they got prayed through to the Holy Ghost right over there while we was over here casting out the devil. It didn't last long, but uh, some saved him by fear. And you got to understand, when Jesus shows up, things begin to happen. Amen. When we make him a priority, when we invite him, when we host the Lord, amen, that's what I want to do today. I, I'm, I'm trying to host him today, here and there. I want him to show up. I want him to touch us. I want him to change us. I want to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Don't you? Don't you? I'm addicted. I, I, listen, I'm like a junkie looking for another fix, man. I'm telling you, that's the truth. That's the only thing I know how to reckon it to. It's where I come from. I'm like a junkie looking for another fix. I need some more of him. Amen. It's like, it's like Elijah and Elisha. Remember that? Elijah walks by and slaps Elisha with a mantle. He's plowing with 12 yokes of I believe he shook all over. He said, good God Almighty, I get to have some of that. I don't know where it comes from, but I need that. And, and, and he takes out, he follows that man all the way till he's took out of this world trying to get another fix. Grabbed the mantle, walked back to the river, smoked the river, said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Twice the anointing fell on him because he sought after God and the presence of the Lord. You know something? You need to host him. He, I know I know it's quiet, but you need to host him. You need a place that you can go, it's just you and him. Hey, and you know what? I, I, you ain't even gotta pray you ain't gotta pray in King James Version. I know a lot of people do, you know, but you ain't got to. Do you know what you need to do? 
You need to come in and sit down and talk to him like you would your friend. Invite him in. Tell him you love him. Thank him for all the good things he's done. He's done hey, ain't none of us in here not doing better than what we, what, what we used to do. I've seen it a whole lot worse, ain't you? I've seen it had a house full of kids and no money. God put my, God filled my porch. I didn't know what to do. I'd just go downstairs and host God. And I was ashamed to ask him for food. Working every hour they'd give me, but I'd go down there and host him and come back upstairs and my porch would be full of food. Host God. you you got to learn how to do that. you got to take care of his business and he takes care of your business. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. All these things. You know what messes us up? Things. I was riding my neighbor, bless his old heart. He was going down the road and he's a good fella. He's a Baptist. He's the good Baptist as I ever met. Me and him riding down the road yesterday. Eddie Diesel over working on my own motorcycle over there. Well, he's, going to, he's talking about we didn't own nothing. He said, this ain't your truck. I said, no, sir, it ain't my truck. He said, it belongs to the Lord. I said, yes, sir. I said, it ain't my house. I said, it belongs to the Lord. I said, just let me use it. I said, it ain't my car. I said, just let me use it. I said, motorcycle. I said, it belongs to the devil. It's about to worry me to death. <laughs> he laughed all the way back to the house. But you have to understand, all these things that you got, it's because the Lord blessed you. If you learn how to host Him, not put things before God, God will give you anything. He'll give you the desire. Seek you first the kingdom of God. All these things. Things mess us up. We think we've got to have things. We need God. That's what we need. We, we, ought, we, we ought not to let the things of God go in disrepair while we're trying to fix everything. You know, the devil will get involved in things and keep you so busy that you can't seek after the kingdom of God. Won't he do it? I, now, I, I didn't know the man personally, but I heard him over here on this side talking about a man. He was, he was making $100 a week back in the day, and that was pretty good money 25 years ago. He was making $100 a week, the guy was. And, uh, and the pastor at the time told him he needed to pay his tithes, $10. And the Lord blessed him so that he was making, he went from $100 a week to $1,000 a week. You know what he told my pastor? He said, I don't have time. I don't have time. And he said, nor can I afford to pay my tithes now. And needless to say, I'm needless to say, it all went away. Hey, I asked a man one time, I asked a man one time to be on the deacon board here. He said, I don't have time. And he said, I'll just tell you right now, I don't pay tithes. That's what he said. I said, well, I'm glad you're honest. I mean, you know, I appreciate your honesty. And he said, I got things I want to do. And I'm telling you, he lost everything right after that. He lost it all. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Host God. Invite Him. He'll come. If you invite Him, He'll show up. Will He not? He will. And the problem that we have is, is we don't have. Because see, we, we come in because we know us. And we know the tendencies that this flesh wants to have. Uh, listen, I've stopped this flesh from doing a lot of things. With the help of God in the last almost 30 years of serving God. How many, how many has had to get a hold of the flesh? We've all had to. And you know, the problem with that is, is when we go before the presence of the Lord, then we walk in like we're so guilty. And, and listen, I'm struggling against sin every day of my life. How about you? I'm fighting it every way I can. I'm better at it than I used to be. Amen? But the Bible, James said, if we say we have no sin, we lie. And we fight it. And sometimes we succumb to it. But we still ought to host God. How am I going to get power over it until I host Him? Man, I'm, I'm in something, man. And it's ten. Invite him. Find that place of prayer and say it in his presence. You know, Juanita Bynum said this. Juanita Bynum said this. She said at 5.30 every morning, she goes in and she, and she wrote a song called I Don't Mind Waiting on the Lord. She said, I'll go in there at 5.30. She said, I done got my shower took my clothes on. And she said, I'll sing that little song. She wrote him a song. And she said, he always shows up. She said, sometimes I have to pray and labor and sing for an hour. But she said, he'll come. She said, he'll, sometimes he tests me, she said, just to see how bad I want this. But see, what we do is we fill our minds with everything else, our hearts with everything else. You know, the old timers, man, I mean, it was a bad thing if you watch TV, remember? Old timers would get up and they'd say, the house is full of gun smoke and their hearts is full of Lucy. I would to God they'd watch gun smoke and I love Lucy now. Don't you? And you have to understand... That, that God is a God to be experienced. He's an experiential God. He's not my get out of hell free card. 
He's an experiential God. He wants to be a part of everything you do. I said all the time he wants to love through you, love and touch through you, touch and speak through you, speak it. Go through your going. He wants to be a part of everything in your life. And you know what? He's also a good God. He's not going to make you do it. He's, he wants you to do it. But you've got to learn. If you're going to live for the Lord, you better find that place that you can, that you can find Him, that you can pray. Hey, I can't sing a lick. How many seen that f- Facebook post I put up there last night? So I'm sitting on the porch while my wife's are singing because I don't want the neighbors to think I'm beating on her. <laughs> That's about how I am when I sing. I don't sing good. But uh, sometimes you just got to go in there and sing till the Lord shows up. And then when He does, go for God with everything in you. Worship Him. Tell Him what's, tell him what's bothering you. Tell him, don't, you can't hide it from Him. Tell Him what the devil tripped you up in and how you need power over that. How are you going to get out of it? How are you going to get power till you go to the Lord? The only power I have now is what God gave me. I didn't have none before. If you'd known me before, hey, listen, listen, you ought to be thankful to God that I am your pastor and I'm saved today. Because I'm telling you, if I lived in your neighborhood, you would have no gas to get here today. I stole everything you had. It's the truth. It's the truth. And you have to understand with me that the power we have over sin comes through God. And how are we going to get more power until we learn how to experience more of God? The more you let Him in, the less of you it'll be. Amen. That's what prayer and fasting does. Amen. Fast, they said praying to keep you staying and fasting to keep you lasting. Anybody got a question or comment? It's time to go. And I'm going to run plumb through this thing wide open. Anybody got anything you want to say before I let you go? Hey, the, here's your homework assignment for next week. Find that place and experience Him. Host Him and invite Him to come. And watch Him come and be a part of your life. Thank you for being in Sunday school. Come back next week and bring somebody with you. Did you?